the recording has started uh, let's pray either prince or dev one of you would you please lead us in prayer prince can you can you lead us Okay, uh, I think Dave uh, would like to request you. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to hear? Yes, yes, I am able to hear. No, actually, my your voice is too low. So. Oh, is it? Okay, let me just adjust it. Yeah. Let me know whether it's any better. It's fine is it for any me. Better? Is it better? Okay. Prince, can you hear me now? It was, it was fine for me. I see. Okay. I'm not sure. I have kept everything in full volume. Yeah, it's quite okay. For okay. Me. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Ha. Okay. Sure. Great. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us uh, the wonderful morning. As we come before you, Lord, uh, as we're going to learn your word, uh, help us to, Lord, and just lead us whatever you want to do with us, Lord. I pray your anointing be with us, and also I pray for ma'am, also the student, Lord. I submit all students and I'm in your hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Okay, so we shall get back to our subject here. We have been um, studying from the book of First Peter, and uh, to the same audience, Peter writes another epistle. Okay, an epistle is uh, nothing but a letter. So, in the first epistle, we saw that he had um, a lot of encouragement for the persecuted believer. He reminded them of their um, imperishable, eternal, precious inheritance. Because of which, you know, he said that uh, uh, this life, you know, don't don't worry about the challenges that you're going through in this life. God is there, and uh, we are from a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So uh, basically, he's just trying to help them understand that the struggles of this world will not last forever. And uh, we also saw that he gives them pointers on how to live their lives. Um, uh, as believers in uh, a world where you know people are observing them so <coughs> in the context of uh, authority he spelled it out like he talked about uh, uh, the governmental leaders and he talked about the uh, husband wife relationship husband uh, over the wife and then he also talked about you know leadership in the in the church how do you uh, deal with elders so uh, basically he emphasizes on submission okay that we must walk in submission we must walk in honor and um, uh, so in this way you know he kind of um, uh, brings in encouragement brings in uh, instruction but in the second episode the subject is completely different so he found it important to address the issue of um uh, false teachers okay uh, and so you find that the second epistle is a warning to the believers first epistle was encouragement but second epistle is a warning so uh, similar to the book of first john remember we all we all uh, went through the three epistles of the book of, written by apostle john and uh, it seemed like even John, you know, at some point he brought in the subject of uh, apostasy and, you know, people trying to mislead the uh, sheep or the flock of God and bring in uh, wrong teaching, wrong instructions, wrong example. And so all the apostles seem to be warning the people to hold on to the true doctrine and to recognize these false teachers and false uh, you know, leaders 
uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, so you would find that this entire epistle is more of a warning. Okay, so that is what is covered in this epistle. So let's get into it. Um, I'm in Second Peter chapter one, uh, where again, you know, as per the um, method of writing, uh, Peter introduces himself. He uses his full name for some reason here, Simon Peter. We know that Peter is the name that God gave him, Jesus gave him, but Simon is uh, was the name that he was known by. Uh, it kind of, you know, if you just want to think about it, maybe he didn't forget his past and he knew where he came from. And yet, you know, God gave him a different um, a future. Uh, and so it's beautiful to see that, you know, he, this begins with Simon Peter. Uh, this is what God does in people's lives. He turns it around. Uh, and, you know, he introduces himself, Simon Peter, a bond servant. Bond servant, we've seen this earlier as well. Bond servant is like a slave uh, of someone in those times. So he is fully committed or sold out for the kingdom of God, sold out for the cause of Christ. And that is who he is. And he also recognizes his calling. He says, apostle of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so he's quite clear on who he is uh, uh, in terms of the, the assignment that God has given him. Then he addresses the audience. Audience, though uh, earlier we saw that he says, you know, the dispersion of uh, the brethren. So he refers to a geographical region. But in this situation, he just describes their spiritual status. So he says, you who have obtained uh, like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He just describes that through the work of the cross, here are the people of God who have now, uh, 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 you know, this, this uh, precious gift of faith, which has been given to them uh, by the righteousness of God. And how did God display his righteousness? You know, by redeeming us he paid the price for our sins and he uh, bought us back to himself so he says come on now you must recognize who you are again you know, emphasizing more on the spiritual identity of who the people are and that is why he says now you have precious faith with us by the righteousness of god uh, and savior jesus christ now that he has given an introduction, he moves on. You know, again, we saw earlier how uh, greet one another with a holy kiss. You know, that's the way he ended the, the previous uh, uh, epistle. So they had a way of greeting one another. So once again, you know, you find the greeting of their times where he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So that was their way of greeting one another. So right at the beginning, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Okay, So it's like um, uh, speaking blessings over the community of believers. Then we see that he says, uh, in the knowledge of God and of our Lord. Uh, so here is the understanding that for a believer, you know, in our lives, uh, the more we know about the Lord Jesus and knowing here is not necessarily only an intellectual knowledge, but it also refers to uh, an experiential knowledge where we are, um, you know, we know about, but we know also personally know who the Lord Jesus is. So when this happens, you know, the knowledge of God increases. We could also um, see that proportionately our peace and the grace of God also increases in our lives. So, you know, it's, it's uh, 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 also, though it's a greeting and a blessing, there is a truth in it. The truth is that the more I come to know God, the more I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, um, the greater my peace, you know, the greater the grace with which I can move forward. So, you know, that is how he blesses the church. And then he 
affirms to the church that see this uh, salvation which we have through that you know god has given us divine power and what does this divine power do it says his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness so you know isn't it beautiful that god calls us to live the uh, christian life but he doesn't leave us without resources it's as if god is saying okay come let me first give you a deposit of what you need to live a victorious christian life and that is the beauty of it you know even though we may say oh in this world there is the devil there is the um, uh, you know the world which uh, uh, attracts us there is also the flesh which goes against the desires of god there is an overcoming work of the cross which has also given us the victory so you know in every way we are overcomers and that is the great beauty of this christian life that you know we are already uh, even peter he begins by uh, emphasizing the spiritual reality of what has actually taken place so you know it's a blessed thing for us every time we think about us being believers we can be so um, you know so strong because we are victorious no matter what is there in the world we are victorious and he says you are already empowered his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness what do you need to uh, re release and reveal that victory you already have it for life as well as godliness and this comes to us through the knowledge of who through god okay who has called us by glory and uh uh you know he, he also reminds the believers that we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises so you know it's like uh talking of all the good things you know his divine power has given you everything you need for life godliness you've also been given the great and precious promises of god and because of this you know here's the beauty what can happen we can be partakers of the divine nature of god imagine you know if uh, we were we had a gospel where god said okay be holy as i am holy you know uh, be righteous be um, uh, virtuous be faithful be strong so many things that god wants us to be just like him but he never gives us the power or he never gives us the victory you know it is like the old covenant where people knew what should be done but they never had the power to live that kind of a an overcoming life but here is the privilege for the believers you know uh, uh, of those of us who are on the other side of the cross we also have the empowering so he says you have exceedingly great and precious promises you have everything you need for life and godliness so what so you can partake of the divine nature so you and i every believer you know again it is not only referring to pastors uh, sometimes people have that uh, concept you know oh pastors have to be very very holy but believers can't be holy because they are just believers you know they don't have uh, the power to be holy maybe god gives the people in leadership or with a certain calling the ability to be holy but you see every child of god can partake of what the divine nature divine nature so what is the divine nature of god the divine nature of god is clearly a nature which is um so pure you know and so um uh un in uncorrupted and pristine and glorious and uh, you know beautiful so you could look at the nature of god and you see that's why we are told that we must worship god in the beauty of his holiness it's so beautiful that we are awestruck by it we are amazed by how holy wow you know that is the feature about god that attracts us that he, god is a holy god now can i be holy that's what peter is saying believer you can be holy 
you can partake of the divine nature of God because you have been given everything you need for life and godliness and also the exceeding great and precious promises of God. So I can partake of the divine nature of God. Okay. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And you know, that is understood. If we are walking according to the nature of God, we are not walking according to the nature of the world. And therefore, the corruption of sin, which is there in this world, we can we can sort of, uh, you know, uh, overcome that and we can live above it okay, and not be uh, touched by it. Now, a little bit more, uh, you know, he encourages the believers before he comes to the point of uh, warning them. Now that he has spoken about who we are in Christ. Okay, so that is his point. Number one, who we are in Christ. Now, he adds a note to say that a believer's journey should go from strength to strength, glory to glory. Now, anybody who uh, uh, joins a school or, you know, uh, joins a course or uh, anything at all, you know, we want to learn what is our expectation. We go from level one to the next level of learning and then keep moving to the next level of learning. So in the same manner, we are in Christ. Yes, positionally, the truth is that we have already been blessed. We've already received so many things from God. However, there is also a need for us to keep growing, keep learning, keep maturing in God. So, you know, here is that word of encouragement where he says, um, for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith so he gives them some keys and says in this manner you can be a more mature believer okay so somehow when you look at the uh, early church and the epistles that uh, uh, you know were written the leaders uh, and in these cases apostles they always encourage the church to grow how? Just numbers? No. But also, they encourage the church to grow spiritually in maturity. So, he's saying here, how to be a more mature believer? You know, uh, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. Perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. So you notice here that the life and the attitude and the character of the believer uh, should display this spiritual reality that already exists. I, we said that in Christ Jesus, we are partakers of the divine nature of God. But that should show in our practical life, isn't it? And that is what Peter is saying. Now, if you, he says, giving all diligence. You know, giving all diligence is um, the way I, I really appreciate, you know, your batch. Because you are in the third year now. Was it easy to finish first year and then second year, you know, um, uh, every semester, every course, every assignment, all that, and then come all the way to the end of the third year? No. But then, you know, diligence is a, a character where you don't give up. You pay the same attention. You know, you are careful to do. That's what diligence is. You're careful to keep doing what you need to do. and that kind of attitude when you carry all through you know you all have reached here and you know, i'm so uh, happy for you in a matter of a month you all will be graduating with your bachelor's degree so that's the attitude but then you see you must continue with diligence don't just take a uh, uh, you know like uh, they say right you take a chill pill and you say ah now i finished my graduation uh, now I'm going to relax. No need to be attentive to God's word anymore. I've already been so attentive in my classes. No, 
but all diligence means you pay attention you give careful thought to something and you keep at it so in the same way you know he's telling the believers come on you need to be alert uh, give all give your attention and keep adding keep adding to these godly characteristics okay we already have faith good now if you have a believer who has faith and who is not righteous you know it's you just can't make sense of it isn't it it's very disappointing so he says we say we have faith but we also need to be walking in righteousness you know he says virtue virtue is goodness virtue is uh, uh, you know doing the 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 right thing so virtue has to do with truth so righteousness he says faith and virtue have virtue now having virtue being walking in righteousness and you know being true to god and all but if we lack in knowledge we don't know god's word you know we we are so uh, uh, just you know lacking lacking that capacity of understanding would it be beneficial no we should also know the truth of god's word otherwise what happens we don't know how to uh, you know worship god in the right manner we don't know how to teach others about the things of the kingdom of god so it really cripples us okay so he says come on if you add all these things diligently to your uh, characteristics then you will be so productive you will be so useful and you will be mature for the kingdom of god so he said virtue to that you add knowledge to knowledge self control so again when we look at this you know if you've ever seen a leader who practices self control you know, it's very impressive because you know that they have truly applied what they have learned in their personal life and they are able to um you know overcome their fleshly desires so for every believer and uh, you know this is for every believer he's saying all believers can have these things so to your faith you please add virtue to virtue you please add knowledge to knowledge add self control to self control perseverance okay again perseverance is a characteristic of the mature people who are able to bear up under pressure you know people who give up easily we could say that uh, you know that that shows that the strength within them has not yet developed fully but then he says come on if you develop your strength to an extent that you can persevere that is really displaying godly character so to perseverance he says you add godliness now, godliness is again you know characteristic where we are uh, living a god pleasing life okay so in our choices in our thoughts uh, in our uh, behavior in our lifestyle we constantly are living the way it pleases god so he says okay you have perseverance how about you also have godliness and to godliness he says have brotherly kindness okay so uh, you know i don't know why he has chosen these particular characteristics but maybe you know peter observed that these are the ones that are so important for the believers community to uh, display and so he says brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love you know just like apostle john what did he do he went straight to love and you know he just said what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called as the children of god and then you know he goes on he, if you say you love your uh, uh, if you love god and you don't love your brother you know how can that be okay but we must truly love our brothers so he goes straight to love and he begins to describe it and he says that if we carry the character of love you know we will surely walk in victory peter in a more practical way you know he comes to love but then he says come on let's be very very practical here we say we have faith but please display all these other characteristics as well and when a believer has all these characteristics you know we could say that wow you know they are moving towards the path of maturity and that brings honor to god that brings glory to god and that is how you know as pastors and leaders you can also teach your church 
what are we doing we are helping the church to make a journey of growth and maturity towards god okay now coming to verse 8 now again some more encouragement for if these things are yours and they abound so he says that not a little bit but if when we are full of these things when we are full of the character of god then what happens you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ so in other words for us as you know the modern day believers basically he says that do you want to be an effective believer do you want to be a productive believer then please you know you need to have uh, all these things as a part of your character then yes you are an effective productive believer so he says you know barren or unfruitful what is the opposite of that you're not productive for the kingdom of god now moving on he says that this sort of uh, you know if at all people don't have these characters he says he who lacks these things is short sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins so a believer who does not think that you know having the lifestyle filled with the character of god is important if a believer doesn't think that way if a believer only thinks yeah i go i'm saved i go and do all the christian activities doesn't matter you know what else is a part of my life whether i know the word whether i uh, live in righteousness whether you know all the other things whatever we saw you know perseverance and all. it doesn't matter so such a believer he says is short sighted short sighted are people who only think of the present who don't have the wisdom to think of the future you know, imagine if uh, um, somebody gives us uh, uh, somebody gives a um, mother okay a mother uh, i'm just giving a simple example 3000 rupees okay somebody is given a mother 3000 rupees now this mother is uh, she has uh, two kids and uh, she also has a job uh, what would that mother do she would calculate okay you know i'm getting so much out of my job now i also have extra money how about i use it in a good way and then you know what does the mother do the mother will um, you know plan up for that 3000 rupees you know how to use it in such a way that uh, it will one second yeah that it will be beneficial for my family uh, but let's say we give that 3000 rupees to a teenager now this teenager only knows about you know going out with friends and um, maybe you know eating ice cream or um, something to have fun go for the movies buy clothes the teenager will be very excited and how will the teenager use the money just spend it off so do you see the difference in wisdom and foresight it's 3000 rupees it is a big deal for let's say both that mother as well as the teenager but a teenager has no idea about the importance of that amount of money you know that you could probably buy grocery for the house you could probably buy uh, you know gas or uh, fuel cooking fuel for the house or you can pay some bills with that money so somebody with wisdom and foresight knows that we have to live life in a wise way so a maturing believer thinks ah this is what god has blessed me with and you know this is what i must accomplish for the kingdom of god i must um, move forward and those thoughts come to a maturing believer but here he says a short sighted believer doesn't care about these things he's just concerned about today i enjoy today i uh, i'm happy that's good enough but such a believer you notice he says they have forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins so in other words till now 
he said you know precious faith precious promises so the the believer who is careless about their maturity it's as if they have forgotten what a precious sacrifice jesus made for them you know isn't that so sad that when we don't take our spiritual life and we don't take our uh, salvation seriously it is like saying okay jesus whatever you did uh fine it doesn't matter to me so it's like we have forgotten and that is not a good thing it is in fact showing that the believer has become short sighted barren unfruitful all this is ineffective for the kingdom of god so you know it's like stunted growth i don't know if you all have seen there is a uh, there is a gardening technique it's called bonsai uh, maybe some of you know in that what they do they will take a tree okay uh, maybe uh, like let's say mango tree simply i'm just telling you they will grow the tree but in the the size of the tree will be small only okay so there is some technique that they use to keep the size of the tree small it never really comes to its full form and you know when you think of uh, a mango tree you might think of shade you might think of fruit but in the bonsai technique you will just have a cute little tree which you can probably keep on your shelf you know that hey you know this is a whatever this tree or that tree but it will not yield its full results and in a way that's very sad because the full cap potential of that uh uh plant or tree has not been released so same for the short sighted believer who's living for today's pleasures no maturity it's as if you know i'm a believer but stunted okay and not useful for the kingdom of god uh, and, and that is something that we should be careful about and that is why you know peter goes on he says therefore so whenever there is a therefore you have to see what is there before that so till now he just said you need to be mature some people are not mature therefore brethren be even more diligent again he says diligent 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 is be careful to do or be serious be attentive so all believers you know we have to learn this to be serious about salvation and about our spiritual walk with the lord our assignment our purpose we have to be serious about it you know uh, and, and uh, if we are we don't carry that attitude that's not good so he says there is a chance of uh, being stunted so please be even more diligent to make your call and election sure so basically he is saying what god has given to us okay call and election is salvation the inheritance uh, the blessings okay so all those things who we are in christ knowing these things you you try to remain in that because even in hebrews we saw that some have tasted these things and then what they have given it up and such people it is it says it's impossible to renew them into the faith so there is a warning of falling away and we have to be careful so every believer must be diligent and make your call and election sure so this doesn't mean that we are the ones who will assure our salvation no not at all because assurance assurance of salvation comes by the finished work of the cross it comes by the work of the holy spirit okay uh, within us bearing witness within us the believer just has to cooperate and the believer just has to uh, walk aligned with the purpose it's not that we have to do anything to earn our salvation but when we are cooperative with god then we can keep it then we can stay in it and he says if you are careful you know to keep moving with it if you do these things you will never stumble or you won't slip believer you will walk steady in the faith for 
so an entrance would be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ so basically he says hold on till the end if you hold on till the end then what you uh, enter into eternal life and you have uh, heaven waiting for you because you have finished the race and uh, that's the important thing you know they uh, we always say again coming back to the fact that you all are in third year it's easy to start anything easy to start learning an instrument easy to start learning uh, you know reading a book but what is more important is that you finish so the people who have not given up you know they are the ones who end up becoming instrumentalists or the people who have not given up are the ones who finish reading the book now you know you people are completing your graduation right so finishing is so 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 important and as leaders as you know pastors please remember that now we are all serving that's so nice praise god for it but till the end of the journey we have to serve we have to same diligence give even more diligence be alert never in our spiritual walk we should say ah oh, now i'm going to relax you know when you do that in your spiritual life it's very dangerous because satan will be like ah oh, now is my chance in a spiritual life he is relaxing let me go you know let me make him to stumble so peter is basically saying come on believer you have all this in christ jesus please take it seriously finish finishing is important so please make sure you finish this race of faith now again verse 12 he says for this reason i will not be negligent to remind you always of these things though you know and are established in the present truth again he says i will be reminding you know for for us sometimes you know when we read uh, uh, passages of scripture we read about righteousness in one passage then we read again about righteousness in another passage in for the when we're moving into maybe a different book of the bible again you read about righteousness sometimes we we feel that god why are you repeating this for me you see reminders are very good okay and that is why scriptures carry a reminder of many of the truths same truth will be spoken of elsewhere now even when it comes to you know us let's say uh, ministering to people or ministering to the church family is it okay to repeat certain matters is it okay to teach people who they were who are we are in christ let's say you just started a church and you've done a series on who we are in christ after 2 years you come back and you again teach on the same subject you know maybe you use a different title uh but you teach them on the same subject it's a reminder is it necessary yes it is definitely necessary in our spiritual journey many subjects we need to be reminded of it again and again and again so i can't read any one verse and say that i already know i already read this 10 times i don't need to learn anything out of it you know whenever a believer does that that is when it is dangerous because we feel that we got everything out of it already but you see the power of god's word is such that uh, uh you know that truth will always remain and that truth will always work in us to change us and transform us and so we must believe in the capacity of god's word and you know the power of god's word as hebrews 4:12 you know we saw god's word is living it's active it's powerful sharper than any two edged sword so we must never take it lightly and reminders are always very good so if at all i feel like hey this is a reminder be happy about it that god is once again helping us refresh our knowledge then again he moves forward and he tells them 
you know about how this life is temporary verse 13 he says yes i think it is right as long as i am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you knowing that shortly i must put off my tent just as our lord jesus christ showed me so he's talking about his end he knows that he is going to die and he refers to his body as the tent okay tent is temporary but a uh, constructed house is you could say permanent so he says this body is temporary but the glorious body that we are going to have later you know that is in eternity and that is what we should fix our eyes on uh, and you know because he knows he's going away fast uh, soon he says that it is very important for me children of god to remind you of all these matters that you must know who you are in christ that you must keep maturing be productive be effective be diligent give attention to god's word so on and so forth okay now verse 15 he says moreover i will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease so you see this is very apostolic that the apostles have the doctrine and they don't want the people to forget the doctrine okay and we know that the bible uh, um is made up of the doctrine of the founding apostles so you have people like paul peter john james who have put down for us the uh, the truth of god's word and the boundaries you know of uh, that truth so they also wanted to make sure that the church is built on the truth of god's word that it should not be uh, infiltrated with lies and uh, all kinds of other false philosophies and doctrines and that is why peter is uh, reminding the people and he's saying come on you know i will be careful to ensure these are all words to say that this is very important the truth is very important you have to stay in the word i will make sure the truth is preserved so that it can be carried forward to generations so he says that you will always have a reminder of these things after my decease so that shows us why the apostles wrote the epistles you see they could have just spoken it to the people isn't it but they knew that if they put it down in writing then what happens even if they die their words continue to speak you know here we are 2000 plus years later reading the epistle of uh, apostle peter and the doctrine where we are understanding okay this is the truth we should not allow any false philosophies or false doctrines to come and um, uh, you know change the things that we have already learned so apostles are usually careful to make sure that the truth is out there so the written documents are so important so that's what peter is saying i i'll be gone i i'm going to die soon i know that but uh, you know if i put it like this in writing remember he said with silvanus or uh, silas i wrote this all down so that you have a copy and a reminder even if i'm gone you know what you need to do so verse 16 for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were i witnesses of his majesty so you see just like john now john said that right we have seen we have heard we have uh, touched so what was john saying john was saying i'm talking to you about history some philosophies in the world some religions in the world they have a, a mythological basis so it's not history so they have all these stories that have no reference in world history but john said i have seen i have felt i have heard of those things i am telling you this is peter remember he is one of the first few disciples of jesus so he is saying i'm not cooking up any story so he says 
cunningly devised fables again fables are stories you know how uh, you have all these kid stories right they may not necessarily be real so fables he saying that the gospel the truth of god's word it's not a story but then he uses the term i witnesses so we have seen these things it is historical i witnesses of his majesty so his majesty when did peter see the majesty of jesus in so many ways you know peter was there when jesus did the miracles peter was there on the mount of transfiguration peter was there when he um, you know met with jesus after his resurrection peter was there when jesus ascended so peter is saying i know what i'm talking about i have seen the majesty of the lord jesus christ it is historical okay so again you know apologetics we we are talking about history here and so there is a lot of evidence as well which can be uh, spoken of when we uh, talk of the life of jesus christ so he continues he says for he received from god the father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain so again he talks about this as a an eye witness okay where uh, uh, he saw you know jesus being uh, i think this was in transfiguration right when uh, they heard a voice yeah correct he heard a voice uh, from heaven where uh, even though there were other men like uh, moses elijah and all present it was jesus who has been affirmed by the father okay going to verse 19 he says and so we have the prophetic word confirmed okay so you see he's talking in a very apologetic way he says that uh, it has happened what the prophets had spoken it has already happened and i have seen it so we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts so you know he says that the prophecies about jesus have come to pass and so here is the truth about the prophetic word remember in uh, 1 uh, corinthians 14 3 we say the prophecy is to uh, comfort uh, what is it comfort exhort and <laughs> i only forgotten okay one second let me just okay ah so it uh, is to it's in a different translation here ah uh, nk jv edify exhort and comfort yeah edify exhort and comfort but he says the prophetic word is also a light in the darkness so you see that uh, uh, the prophetic word already reveals the mind of god to us so even though at present it feels dark there is a light what is that light it's the truth of god's word the prophecy that yes you know for the believers of the uh, old testament they had the prophetic word that the messiah is coming so though it was a dark season they knew that surely the messiah will come so in the same way for us today if we have the prophetic word of god in our hearts there are all kinds of prophetic words isn't it there is the prophecies bible prophecies about what is going to take place in the future that also gives us clarity on the second coming of christ the end of the world and all those matters and then we have personal prophecy again we have to understand that personal prophecy is conditional it depends on the cooperation of the individual so even personal prophecy it is it strengthens us okay it really strengthens us because we carry a word in our hearts you know maybe our church is really small right now but 
that is a prophetic word which says okay i'm going to increase you i'm going to bless you so on and so forth so what is the the work of a prophetic word it's like light in the darkness that's how it works and that how it blesses a believer okay so we have come to the end of uh, the first session let's take a quick break let's come back and we will move forward okay fine so uh, let's meet at 10 01 thank you